In the part three of the video, I'm going to talk about some advanced topics and how to do that. So this is totally optional for advanced users. So the first I'm going to talk about how to switch from the Windows Store version to the EXE version for the Power BI desktop. The second I'm going to talk about the how to find my Oracle home or the Oracle installation location. The third, we are going to talk about how to use the Telnet to test the connectivity to the database. Let's get started. So here, let's talk about how to install the actual version or the EXE version of Power BI. So you are going to basically, let's use the Windows key and find our uh, App Store version. And I can right click to uninstall it first to avoid any confusion later because you are going to have two identical Power BI that is there. So you, I'm going to click Chrome. Basically, you can use some other browser as well. I'm going to type in Power BI desktop download. And once I click here, this is the first thing that I see on the downloads here. After see the first result, and basically they want you, they want me to, uh, if I click the download, they will lead me into this Windows Store. But instead, we are going to click this advanced download options. Once I click here, you can see there is a new page that basically what suits like language, and I can click download. So in here, if I click download, I have I see two versions. One is the 64-bit version, and one is the 32-bit version. So I would recommend to go for the 64-bit version, whose name is longer, because 64 is in general better. And I'm so I'm going to start the downloading. Once it is done, I'm going to click and click the exe file and choose install. Cool, so basically I can select my language and like yes. And it's going to install. Basically you can just decide what is the path and basically the, the place that you want to install this software. Cool, so after a few minutes wait and up, after a couple of like clicking next, basically I finished installation and now I'm using the traditional desktop version of the Power BI desktop. So now I'm just going to launch it and it looks exactly the same as the uh, Windows Store version. But here, basically, we're just switching, uh, switching gear into, into the traditional EXE version. Cool, so everything looks brand new, and I can just click Get Data. And now, let's use Oracle. Basically, you might see a different thing that is coming. But yeah, this is basically how you are going to use the uh, traditional, desktop, uh, traditional EXE version to basically do, do the installation. Another quick thing that I want to elaborate that is from the Microsoft. It says basically from your local computer, you have to copy the file from one folder to another. So basically, if you uh, this has this require you to go to your Oracle home, which basically you know the path when you install that uh, Oracle client. But for any like for any reason, if you if you forgot what is the path, basically you can also look that up. So you can see here, uh, I paste the method here. You can basically, let's type in together. Let's go into click Windows key and let's type in uh, register, uh, registry editor, R-E-G-E-D-I-T. And basically you can see this uh, yellow cube, uh, sorry, blue cube like this. I'm going to click in here and click yes. And we can go into the path and to find it. So basically at the left side of your screen, you will see some kind of the local host key and that stuff. So you're going to look, go into the H key local machine software Oracle. So I'm going to just open H, lo uh, H key local machine and software, and I'm going to uh, find Oracle. Okay, Oracle is here. So basically you can see here, there's a key Oracle 12 home one on the screen and you can see here if you see the middle there is a path that says hey here is your oracle home location it is going to the client one 
So this is how you can find and troubleshoot and then copy the file. And for some of you, for this uh, Oracle, you might see multiple home one, home two, home three. So if you're, uh, so there are some other ways, but it's getting too complicated. So basically as a temporary solution, if you see multiple of this Oracle, uh, Oracle home instances, and basically it's a temporary solution, just do this, uh, just do this exercise, do this operation for all of them. Just basically, if you don't know, so yeah, that's pretty much it about this method on how to look up the Oracle home. So the last thing that I want to talk about is to test the connectivity to your server. Because uh, right now we are in the hybrid cloud world and there are some lot of things like on-premises, AWS and Azure, all of them working together. There might be some security group or some firewall setup that you might not aware of. So this part basically is this for the advanced users only. If you are comfortable that is doing some testing and networking, a network test. But if you are just like regular business users, basically you can ignore this part and your IT department will be able to help you with this. So let's uh, go through some assumptions here. Of course, this step, first this step is optional, and it, but it will help you to identify one of the most common root cause, which is the firewall or the security group uh, setup issue. And basically, uh, of course, the second thing is pretty common. Basically, make sure you have the correct uh, server address or server DNS name. That is, you paste or you typed into the Power BI. Or, of course, it will not work, right? We have certain cases that is about this. And basically, it's just a third thing. It's basically a little bit, also a little bit simple. But uh, please make sure your target Oracle database service or the exact cloud service uh, is up and running. And the last thing, basically, make sure on your local client side, you, uh, if you're going to connect to on-prem, you might need to basically have VPN and basically some of the companies also require you to have all the security checks, such as your, uh, yeah, and your like uh, software and also the virus software, scan software, all the prerequisites, make sure they are passed. All right. So basically, the thing that I want you to do basically is to do a telnet and basically to check. Okay. So what you can do here, basically, let's do a quick demo. So first things first, we are going to install the telnet client. So click Windows key and type in control panel. And let's go into the control panel here. There is one thing called program. And I'm going to click program. And you can see there's a shield here and there's this turn windows feature on or off. I'm going to click here and basically it listing everything that uh, I already have here. So you're going to search for telnet. So basically it's sorting by, uh, sorting by the alphabet. Basically you can see here, I already have my telnet client installed. If that is not, basically please check that and click OK. Once it is done, basically, uh, you will go into CMD. I'm going to type also type Windows key and type in CMD. And what I'm going to do is type, type in telnet and basically your address and basically the port number. And that is basically what you can do here. I'm going to give a real example so you see what is the success message will look like. I'm going to type in telnet and so once you install the telnet, you can basically go into click start, start and go into CMD. In CMD, I'm going to tell, I'm going to put telnet and basically you can type in your server address. In this case, I'm going to use one that as an example. Uh, so this is my server address. And basically I'm going to type the port Oracle by default is 1529. And I'm going to click here. Okay, if you see a blank screen, which means that it's a successful connect, I'm going to basically use the ESC key or basically just to, uh, to, to exit out. So yeah, this is basically shows your, your laptop can, can connect 
to that uh, server. If you see some other messages such as trying to connect and basically it's failing or something or timed out, basically there's something wrong at the network. At network, maybe there's no root table, maybe there's no security group. So basically, you can check what is going on, uh, like with the at the server side or at your local desktop side, see any firewall issues, and that's pretty much it.